How soon it will take health systems to get back to normal will of course depend on the, the scale and length of the outbreak. Um, but I think perhaps more important is thinking about whether we want them to get back to normal. Actually, we'd rather these health systems became considerably uh, better and improved through this, um, through this dark time they're going through. Um, if not, it's just a matter of time until we're here again. But what's important is we utilise what's happening here and now to leverage continued investment in health systems so that this doesn't happen again. So rather than health systems return to normal, we should make sure that they actually move on to become better and stronger than they were before the outbreak. A good example where health systems became stronger through initiatives around a, 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 a global disease burden would be polio. Polio eradication, the initiative, the large um, expenditure of, of time and effort and resources and emotion that went into that was very significant because it, it impacted on health systems in a very positive way which le left them stronger and more able to deal with other forms of infectious disease than just um, polio. So it's looking at improving the skills of the health workers, the infrastructure of the health systems themselves. We would hope that the Ebola outbreak does something similar, that the immense resources from the national governments and the international uh, uh, community, international aid agencies, is not simply going to be left to rust and wither, as often has been the case in the past, or is removed and reallocated um, somewhere else, but actually is integrated much more into the health system that it's currently in and leaves it in a much stronger position to prevent, really, these sorts of outbreaks occurring or occurring to the same magnitude through very early identification and, uh, and, and preventive measures. Clearly strong health systems require um, access to adequate um, numbers of health workers, well-skilled health workers, access to essential medicines, all those sorts of uh, aspects of course, but strong health systems can only be founded on strong economies. Somehow the health workers, the pharmaceuticals, the hospital beds and all the rest of it will need to be paid for and that can be paid for from development aid and that creates dependency of, of countries um, on the international communities or it can be paid for from the economic growth and that's why it's very important that we think of health systems not just in an isolated sense and the aspects related to them being improved, but also that at its most basic there needs to be resources to pay for strong health systems. Where do those resources come from? So a critical element of a strong health system is a strong economy. When it comes to Ebola, what's important is um, continuing to strengthen the health system aspects around health workers, infrastructure and the things that we see in the news every day that the international community is investing in, but also that they continue to invest in those areas to support developments of the country's economies. Perhaps the most important role that, uh, that donors and uh, the international community can play as we go forward to strengthening health systems is actually to keep Ebola on the agenda for much longer than it would naturally be. Clearly outbreaks um, come and then eventually, hopefully they go um, quickly, but they do go and uh, as usual agendas move on to something else. What's important is why we've had such a, a, a large outbreak of Ebola this time and we didn't in previous occasions. A lot of that is around prevention and the importance of health systems as a preventive measure rather than a, a, a treatment um, vehicle. It's very important that we use uh, Ebola and the international community continue to use it and to refer back to it to make it clear why prevention is important, why investing in health systems for prevention is important. The amount of resources that have um, currently um, in the future will be spent on trying to deal with this outbreak uh, probably outstrips the sum that would have been required in previous years to allocate to strengthening these health systems, the laboratory services, the surveillance, the health workers, uh, the primary care, strengthening those elements to prevent an outbreak like this. And that's the typical dilemma we have or the paradox we have around prevention and uh, treatment of course from a national level through to the international level. 
It's much harder to gain traction to prevent something happening than it is to deal with something that has happened. Internationally, if infections are controlled, those countries which don't invest in them can benefit as well. The problem, of course, is then no one has an incentive to invest in them and they don't happen. It's important that we therefore have international cooperation and agreement to fund things which are going to benefit everybody. And infection control, surveillance are absolutely the most critical global public goods for health, which should be invested in by national governments as part of their own national health um, systems and in terms of their own national health security, not as part of aid or development, but in addition to aid and development.